Welcome to the magic job. The magic job. Magic Jar Review, we're back for another picking. We've got the jar here. Yellow's our restaurant, blue's our guest. Let's get the show on the road. Anytime I'm gone. Alright, so I'm gonna pick out a guest first. Come through, try your weave. In another traffic, you got me weaving. And in the restaurant. It's mad when I'm leaving. Come through, lay like the wee man. Pressure so good that a nigga got key. Start with the guest. And we have got Eddie Caddy. Like my thing is, I'm always trying to teach people my culture. Like, even if I teach someone a new word every day. I'm from Congo, we speak a language called Lingala. For me, it's the most beautiful language in the world. So, you know, when someone asks me to teach them something, I always teach them like Mbote, which means a lot. And let's see where we're going. She love me when I play keys, but my niggas push keys like Pablo. We're going to Deluxe Manor. Catch you guys there. Okay, so what, what are you getting? Fumbwa. Yeah. Taba. Kwanga. Okay, and then for the people at home who don't know what that means. Okay, so fumbwa, fumbwa is basically um, it's cassava leaves in peanut butter stew. So it's like a soup type of thing about okay. cassava leaves. My fave. So kwanga is basically cassava. So kwanga can be compared to eba, can be compared okay, to okay. like pounded but harder. Yeah. I mean, it's like it's like fufu. For me, kwanga is like fufu. It looks like yam. Yeah, it's like Fufu's savage cousin. That's <laughs> yeah, that's that. the one that goes to gym. Fufu's it's really yeah, solid. It's, solid. it's, it's solid. solid. So they pounded it and then they put it back yes. to become solid again. You know what it is? They pounded and he said not today. No, no, no. <laughs> and then that's Taba, okay. Taba is basically go or like me. I might have even gone for for they know ngulu. Yeah, liboke, liboke angulu. Ah, liboke angulu is basically it's, it's pork, isn't it? Yeah. But pork that's being they cook it in leaf. It drips, bro. I think a lot of African cuisines, they don't really use pork. Yeah. So that's the first time I've heard. No, no, no Congo, we don't play with pork. <laughs> they said they don't play. Yeah. Congo, we, don't, we, don't play. we don't play with pork, yeah. man. It's a big part. Yeah. My dad sent me this video the other day. I don't know if that's his way of trying to put me on pork yeah. without telling me. Because yeah. if he told me, that, I'd be like, but you eat pork. I've seen you, so don't try it. <laughs> so he just sent me a video and it was just hundreds of pigs being dashed into one hole. And I said, dad, 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 what is this? But what, are they burning them just to kill them or to cook them? They kill them. Oh, they why? Getting rid of them. So I'm like, Dad, what's this? He said, I think it's coronavirus. I said, Dad, this what? video is about 10 years old. <laughs> I said, Dad, okay. I said, Dad, this video is about 10 years old. I'm guessed that you lot picked my, my people's, man. My people's yeah. spot. Now, your, your, your people's need more spots, man. We need more spots, um, but I also think we need to be here a bit longer. We, I think we've established ourselves a bit now, so the next generation is for them. Because if you look at um, Congolese generation, our parents, a lot of us came in the early 90s. Some, some maybe late 80s, a lot in the early 2000s. Yeah, yeah, it's true, yeah, it's true, it's true. So it's still a very new generation. Like my yeah, yeah. siblings were born in the 90s, right? They're like the first generation that were born here. So they've got to grow up and then now start establishing businesses. Whereas I think with, yeah. with you guys, a lot of your parents, some of them in the 70s. Now that you say it, you're right. Because a lot of the people that I know that are Congolese were born in we're Congo. Born in Congo. And I just, it, just didn't, it just didn't connect. In my generation, I was born in Congo. I came in when I was eight. Yeah. And a lot of people, there's, there's hardly people from my generation that will say, you know what, we were born here. If you now go to France, which, okay, is, yeah, which is francophone, yeah. French speaking, yeah. totally different conversation. Yeah. You'll have loads of restaurants, loads of barbershops, yeah. loads of churches. When you look at entertainment, yeah. the generations like the Young Baines and the Avellinos, they are either just about was born here, yeah. kinda, just in, you know what I mean? But now, if you go to France, top 10 artists, maybe seven of them are Congolese, yeah. but they've been there, they were born there, their parents came young, you know what I mean? They established themselves a lot earlier, so there is a, there is a bigger conversation to have, there's a bigger scene and stuff. So we are now getting there in, in, in the UK, you know? So I had, to, I had to take the hit. I'm, one of, I'm, part of the I'm part of the generation that had to take the hit, you understand? It's like, what are you talking about? What, what's this kachu kachu thing? What's this nombolo? What's this kwanga thing? This lingala, what's scared of? But I've always known we'll get there. For anyone that's ever experienced Congolese food, yeah, at a Congolese wedding, it's always been a different experience, an exciting experience. But we've never had the, the tools to push it out there as much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, Congolese weddings are late. But they're late, though. That's why they're late. <laughs> they are late wow. because they're late. <laughs> so they're later than you guys? Yeah. Oh, this Congolese wedding. We intend to leave at 6 a.m. End the wedding, wedding. at 6 a.m. 6 a.m. So, if the ceremony says 11 o'clock, somebody's lying to you. Ain't no one doing the ceremony at 11 o'clock. It's happening at like 3 p.m. Weddings are the latest. Now, I hosted a Congolese wedding. Oh, yeah. so, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> I was dying to change it. Man changed his outfit. It came out. You know, the outfit ran out of fashion. It was yeah. <laughs> By the time that, the came, was like, was. I, I say, if you want to really get there, 9 p.m. 9, 10 p.m. Then we're kicking off. Yeah, what are you talking about? What's this? The reception? The reception? Yeah. The weddings are special, but if you get on there, the vibe, the food, the dancing, it's a whole different thing. And you know, Congolese people, we dance, we, dance. We, we have routines. I think now, West Africans are starting to catch up with the routines. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like one or two songs will come on, you know how what to do maybe at that moment in yeah, yeah. time. Congolese people, the beginning of the song to the end, seven minutes long, there's a routine. We know what to do every single move, every step. Who teaches this? Nobody teaches anyone. <laughs> I don't want to know. We don't know. It's an update. You just say it's like an iOS update. Just have to plug ourselves to the nearest computer. Now with Azonto, you can Azonto throughout the whole Azonto song. Whereas this one, no, 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 there's no. a different song part for each verse. What? <laughs> Literally, during the verse, there's a whole routine. <laughs> because when you know he's saying a certain thing, you, you, have, are, to you have to do it. So if you flop, can you just Everyone sit down? <laughs> <laughs> sit down. You can tell if you're dealing with a Guardian or Nigerian. Yeah, you can yeah, tell straight away because we left that move time ago, he's still... <laughs> Bob, can you, can you nah. sit down? Dancing for us it has been a form of escapism for a long time in Congo as well. Whether we're going for atrocities, we're going for suffering, dancing was always the thing that made you forget about everything. It's just part of our culture. I was five years old in Kinshasa and my mum would go to church and I would stay with my aunties who were babysitting me. They'd put me in the middle of the dance floor and play music. And I'm into it. My mum never used to dance like for your girl. <laughs> <laughs> my mum my hated that because some, a lot of those dances, they, they're not good. So my mum was like, we are Christians. You should not be doing the dance. I'm like, sorry, mum. <laughs> sorry, mum. I think that's what it was for us. As soon as Congolese people landed in this UK, some of us came like rebels, straight in. We didn't even want to learn the language. We spoke the language how we wanted it to be. We didn't care. But that was our sort of defense mechanism, but also presence. Yeah. But on the other side, our joy, the way we express ourselves, our life. You guys are very eccentric. 100%. From the attitude to the clothes. To the clothing. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's funny with the clothing. That's become a stigma to an extent. Something that I'm proud of when you talk yeah. about sapology, which is the art of dressing, yeah, the yeah, art yeah, of style, yeah. right? And some people take it extreme. It's like, you, you have like Jamaicans, you have Yardies. Yeah. I used to say you lot are the Yardies of Africa. Right, this is it, right? <laughs> <laughs> now, I wouldn't quite go like that. <laughs> Stop it, man. I wanna cry. I felt like I was driving down the A406 and, yeah, 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 and he just took the next exit. Like, <laughs> the same way with Jamaicans, you have the Jamaicans yeah. and then you have the Yardis. Congolese like people are the like same that. as well. Yeah, so yeah. we have people who are into their eccentric dressing, they're really eccentric. Like, and that's, yeah. their, that's their form, their art. Oh, yeah. I've always been happy for them to represent yeah. because it just shows our the way we express ourselves. Yeah. The clothing alone shows the way we speak. It's the way we cook, it's the way we dance, it's the pride that we hold with our country. I've had so many people come to me and I talk about Congolese food, they say, you know what, that Ntaba bangs. I'm like, you're not telling me nothing. Man. But you see, Ntaba, yeah. <laughs> Ntaba is so good, no one like mispronounces it. Do you know how deep that is? <laughs> see culture, yeah. Culture creeps up on you. The more people that are seen to be doing something, the more it becomes accepted. And I don't even like the word accepted because I don't need anyone to accept for me to be able to do what I need to do. But that's just the reality of life, understood. You know, people can start to relate. I remember my earliest uh, forms of uh, when I was doing stand-up and I was talking about fufu. And people said, what's fufu? I said, fufu is like, it's like mashed potatoes, but 10 times harder. Once you consume it, you are going to sleep. But when you wake up, Every ounce of you has got a six pack. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> your, even your attitude has six pack. That was the best way to explain it for people yeah, to relate. Totally then eventually, yeah. when more people start, we start eating fufu together, we start eating pounded yeah, jam yeah. together, people start thinking, this is cool. I took it upon myself to say, if I've got this platform, I'm going to talk about my country. Because mm. everyone else seems to be sorted. I'm going to break down certain stereotypes. I'm going to celebrate it yeah. from, from the dancing to the language, to the food, to the fashion. Do you know what I mean? Just, just the essence of everything. Do you know what I mean? Just the culture. Mm. Me personally, I don't eat fufu. Like, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't know where to start yeah. from when I was young. The texture of, of fufu for me wasn't, that's why kwanga for me just made more sense. But kwanga was just like, I'm with you. When kwanga went into my system, it knew where to settle. It's, it's the angle, it's the how you, when you, when you take it, well, I'll demonstrate. When you take it, it's how you push it, you, you squeeze it in there, but you, you're not coming one with it. And then when you now, whether it's in that madesu, which is the white kidney bean stew, you can also have it as just the normal kidney bean stew. Oxtail, we have also oxtail, that's called mikila. So mikila's tail. I can have pondu, which is cassava once again, but this time it's cassava leaves, but it's cooked totally different. You can incorporate fish in that, but we don't want the fish. <laughs> I'm not a fish guy. Then you go, talaga, to an apale, 
La cuisine, la biso, ma soleil. Yeah, all, all of that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Les beaux kangourous, donc, fait vanda. Les beaux kangourous, font beau ça. Et what did you do with her? I'm going to have to put some titles. I told you guys earlier, only the beaux kangourous is the pork. Okay, yeah, 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 so you, you need that. I believe, yeah, even, even with you guys, when you're ordering your food, yeah, if you're ordering your language, bruv, it increases the appetite. <laughs> I'm sitting there telling him, bro, yeah, bring me kwanga and and some taba and I'm not even hungry no more. I'm put off. Let me say that you're not hungry, you're not quiet. And, and the thing is, when you say it in the language, you add certain little things just to make it even more exciting. So when I'm like, you're not quiet, you're not quiet, but I'm not quiet, you're not quiet, for taba, I'm not quiet. So I'm saying, I'm saying, listen, today is the day of quiet. Taba my city, taba my city, but I'm not quiet, but I'm not quiet, but I'm not quiet, but I'm Fantastic, wonderful. All this thing now, it prepares me for the meal. That's the art of ordering. This is my favorite drink in this place. Nah, this drink looks nice. It's, 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 it's standard chocolate. I don't know. They won't tell me what they do to it. <laughs> because it, it's this and Chapman. Have you had What's that? Chapman is basically it's a sprite with Fanta and some herbs. But they'll never say the type of herbs that they have. <laughs> but you get that in Ghana, you get that in Ghana in Nigeria. But there's also a drink called Vitalo, which is like basically it's like cherry kind of syrupy type juice. A uh, drink in Congo is one of the most famous drinks yeah, yeah, yeah. in Congo, Vitalo. Vitalo. It's red. Okay. You guys, one day you'll come to Congo. I go to Congo like five times a year. Congo is safe. Let me tell you something about Congo. Congo is basically, I say, two thirds of Western Europe. So it's big. When you talk about little wars or situation, it's in the eastern side. It's almost like being in London, but the situation is happening in Berlin. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's almost like saying to Eddie, come to Nigeria, and I'll be like, yeah, I went Boko Haram stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But everybody's in Lagos, they're not feeling no Boko Haram yeah. situation. <laughs> Let, let's keep it's it 100. Like, it's up north. It's up north. Yeah. That's how it is in Congo. You go to Kinshasa, it's like you're in Accra, you're in Lagos. Yeah. That is a way of stopping us from enjoying what's rightfully ours. The same country that they say, in my country, that is dangerous. Yeah. But you see, white people out there having a yeah, great time. If I'm in a house, yeah, <laughs> if I'm going into your house and I'm rubbing the, li the living room, <laughs> yeah, and people come in and they say, where's the... I know that's where most of the stuff is. I'm going to say to you, stay away from the living room. <laughs> that's the most dangerous part. But that's where oh, it's at. Congo, they say stay away from the east. One of the richest places on earth is Eastern Congo. It's probably top two. Because there's nothing that we don't have. Congo can be so sustained. Yeah, we have all the resources. The Congolese can run electricity across Africa. When they were talking about the world, all the bombs, Hiroshima, all those things, it was the uranium they took from Congo. When we're talking about technology, the phones that we use, Coltan. I know for a fact that yeah, Stan Lee exactly wrote Black right. Panther based, based on Congo. On, I said that on a certain platform, a major international platform, and the sound went mute. It's so much deeper when it now comes to where Congo is situated in Africa, right in the center. We are on the equator, so we are aligned with the Amazon, the biggest rainforest in the world, aligns with the second biggest rainforest in the world, the equator, which is in Congo. You understand? Some of the only mountain gorillas that remain is in Congo. It is crazy. That's why for us, it's like Congo will never run out of minerals. But at the same time, because it will never run out of minerals, it will never run out and be needed. I don't really see any initiative to like kind of get people to, to, go. to visit it's Congo. Cool. I think a lot of us have been traveling but not been so vocal about it. Think about Ghana. Let's really think about Ghana, right? I've been going to Ghana for 10 years, so yeah. I know. Yeah. It's only maybe the last four years mm. that people have become vocal and the new generation of diasporans because it's on us. Yeah. Yeah? Are the ones who are now like, it's lit. We're not going to yeah. go to Miami. We're going to go to Accra. Yeah. We're not going to go to Vegas. We're going to go to Lagos. We're not going to, to Cancun this year. We're going to be in Dar es Salaam. So every country has its moment. Ghana, and Nigeria, of course, are more developed than Congo because they've, they've had a, a different run to us. Yeah, yeah. But now, our diaspora generation are now growing and we're growing a lot Coming more. Back, yeah. People are going back and they're settling. So now those conversations become now, you know what, I now want to showcase a lot more. Yeah. This, I'm looking at this juice like it's the first time I'm looking at it. <laughs> Bruh, is, it, is this the same? <laughs> you see what people are eyeing your juice when they had their own. Like he gave me like a different shape <laughs> altogether. I look like you like, I've got a tank. <laughs> Usually, I would break down what I'm up to in English. But what I'm looking at right now is that I could be able to tell you that I'm a million donkey. Oh, donkey. I'm a boca and a mulu. I'm a man. I'm a man. I'm a man. I'm a man. I'm a Obviously, you guys have got the jollof there, the makemba there, my langwa there. But guys, I'm telling you, the boca and mulu. Yeah, cool. Yeah, but there's another. Kwanga. Congo forever. Come on.
Mazwa ki boba Ba cha che Ba miyake Ba ya ma moto Influyansa kudaya Oh my god Ba ma 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 kwanga Se yo Kwanga Music plays a big part when you're eating, you know? Mm -hmm. Africa always humbles me. Mm. The conversation with Africa hum humbles me because I feel so strongly connected to my identity and knowing that we've been cheated, man. Yeah. We've been cheated. And when you understand that you connect with your identity, bro, you grow even bigger. Your wings expand even more because that's the real you. Mm -hmm. I always say you will always be a diluted version of somebody else. But you'll always be a full concentrated version of yourself. Yeah. You can't cheat that. Believe me. Ah, so, I'm finding new combinations here, my <laughs> This guy. <laughs> ah, God. God spoke to me. What, so you've never done this combination? Never. I don't know why. Did you do it? Of course. Oh, but there's still a bit left. Do it. Go again, then. Do it, Charlie. Just, this is just dip it in. When Ghana and Congo meet up. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> wow, I don't even know what to call this anymore. Because this is Fumba. This is Makemba. Fumkemba. Fumkemba. <laughs> okay. Both of you leave. Just leave together. <laughs> the day Fumkemba was born. Are you mad? Man can order it now, isn't it? This yeah, is the yeah, whole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I can have a Fukemba, please. It has to be on the menu. You have to say that seriously, man. Give me a Fukemba. I've still got some Fukemba here, bro. Have you ever had fish that has been freshly caught and then prepared? No. Like straight there and then? Yeah. I've had goat. Goat. <laughs> <laughs> that goat, I've never tasted goat better than that. You know what it is? You're at one with a goat. You My granddad. My granddad was Igwe, village chief. He would spend six months in the village, six months in the city. When he goes to that village, he's got massive, loads of farms, bro. He brought me back a goat. This guy made me walk around a goat for two weeks. Bro. <laughs> two weeks. Bro, it will be pooing. It's yours forever. This is <laughs> what they said to me, you know. So they knew that if I said forever, that's commitment. Bro. I took this goat to eat. I got used to the goat eating. The goat was fighting up. The one day they said, whoo, today is the goat's birthday. Oh. Oh. I said, oh. <laughs> I said, it's the goat's birthday. So what are we gonna do with the goat's birthday? Say, eat the goat. Wait! <laughs> Wait a minute! He said, How does that we eat sense? goats for birthdays. But it's the what goat's birthday! birthday. <laughs> <laughs> so that's regardless of the point. If it's a birthday, a it's goat must somebody, be eaten. Yeah, yeah, somebody's birthday. Say so your goat is the healthiest. I refuse so wholeheartedly. They say you are going to eat that goat today. But I watch them through, finish my budget. <laughs> and I almost feel like when they were taking that bread, you know, he cussed me left. No, no, I had to. So <laughs> 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 today, I've never forgiven myself. Bro. But you ate it, though. What? <laughs> Let me tell you something, yeah? <laughs> the best girl, best girl yeah. you ever had. Huh? I always say with, with Asta Esporans, yeah? When we go back to Africa, we went to any country, whatever fault you see, that's God telling you to fix it. True. If to you it's a fault, it means you have the ability to do better, which means you've acquired the skills to be able to recognize that, which means you should fix it. If there's a pothole, you're tired of the potholes, cover it. That's my total, I swear to That's you. That's a good analogy. Which is, which is why for me, it's a gift. Our biggest gift as young Africans, to be able to grow up in a place where we've been able to acquire skill sets, mm. free of charge and in peace. That's our biggest gift from God. But the idea is we was never meant to stay. Stay, yeah. That was where we messed up. We was meant to go back and make a better Africa for our parents. We meant to go back and then go, this is what we've learned. Mm. Bang. You look left, you see someone that looks like you. You look right, someone that yeah. looks like you. You look front, someone that... Ah, why would you want to serve them? Why would you, would you want to make that place better for them? 
then you're not focusing less on racism and focusing your energy on building. You know what I mean? Making some <laughs> fukemba. <laughs> fukemba. I believe now I need to spend more time in Africa. You can't talk about somewhere that you don't know too well. The presence across the continent is what I'm really going for. That's legacy for me. Okay. And how that can turn into more of an impact in my country. And I keep saying it, if Congo's not free, Africa will not be free. But whether we like it or not, whether we know it or not, the fact remains that Congo is one of the biggest keys for the freedom of Africa. And if we all play our role to help that push, it will go to another level. So I believe in everything that I'm doing, it needs to be more closely connected to Congo, connected to the motherland, because I'm a Pan-Africanist, I'm very proud of that. I don't see any borders uh, on the continent. Um, and I think the idea is, whether you have a, a Stormzy, you have a Daniel Kaluuya, Arnold Cheng, you know, a David Ajala, John Boyega, these are Africans. Yeah. And we're all showcasing what is really special about Africa. Africa. Not everyone needs to move back to Africa. That's, that's not how it works. But understand that that's where your energy should be going. Yeah. Because if Africa is not respected, they will keep telling you to go back to your country. Dr. Carla, an amazing uh, artist, amazing, like, just amazing guy, activist. And he made a statement. He said, as long as Africa is not something that we could be proud of, people are always going to say go back to Africa because it's based on the fact that they can say that to you because they know that you're not going to go back. Yeah. Because yeah, you're not yeah, proud yeah, of it. Yeah. So if you want them to stop saying that, you make Africa good. And even if they do say it, they're almost saying, why are you here? Yeah. When all that's happening back home. It was lit, like, the food, I think this was, I've had Congolese food before, but only at parties. And so it's just been a grab and go kind of this thing. 4.5 out of five. And that's, if you, if you, if you know, my ratings, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not the easiest yeah, to please, bro. <laughs> best so push, man. Yeah, yeah, 4.5 4. out of 5, so, do you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's tight now for the, for the other restaurants. This is not the first time I've been at this restaurant, and of course not the first time I've eaten any of this. It's just a part of me. <laughs> I feel like I've been drinking the sweetest water once again, right? Um, and every time I come to Deluxe and I have the Fumboa, 10 out of 10. When I have my mangulu, the pork, mm. it just, it's, it's, Tell it's them one more time. What's that called? Liboke angulu. Uh. This is liboke. So the stuff that I put around these leaves and that, it's like liboke wrapped. If you have liboke and bisi, you can put fish in there as well. But this one is ngulu because it's pork. So li, liboke yangulu. So, but for me, I'll give it, I'll, I'll definitely give it a 4.5. Do you know why? Because my mum's cooking is 5 out of 5. <laughs> They're not making my viewers uncomfortable, please. They're supposed to be uncomfortable. Baby, can you do this for me? Bend over, touch your feet. Yeah. Baby, can you arch it for me? Ha. Baby, can you do this for me? Young Elewa on the beat. Bend over, touch your feet. Yeah. Baby, can you arch it for me? Ha. Baby, girl, I'm the first that got who? They don't buy me, you know who they do. Big machine, what's good? Slap it down to your hood. I can do the book like MSG. Back from the locks. We had to go back there after the refurb that they had. They invested that like over 100k and the place looks amazing. The plat has changed a bit. Instead of pork ribs, there's lamb ribs now. And to be fair, I think they actually slept better. Also, when the plat are, they've removed the quanga, unless you request for it, and they've added fried rice. And the fried rice, spot on. You can't go wrong with it. And everything else, the taba, the wings, the makemba, planting is still the same the pork the pork's amazing and then the fish some spring onion green type of sauce on top of it that was good that like seasoned well the fish was fresh but what the real game changer is is the cocktails man has introduced cocktails they didn't have cocktails on the old menu they got cocktails now and they slap it so with that i'm gonna give deluxe 4.5 out of 5 we don't decide, the jar decides.
Kemba Papi signing out. I met her, I fell off and close to you Had to turn up an option I met her, I turn up and close to you Had to turn up an option I met her, I fell off and close to you